While I didn't get to view as many anime as I wanted to in 2017, one I'm really glad I did was the newest entry in the long-running Pokemon anime. Pokemon Sun and Moon is seriously one of my favorite things from 2017. It was an anime that kept me eagerly waiting for a new episode drop because that's how enamored I was with it. It is an anime so refreshing, fun, and different from the previous entries that seeing the majority of the Pokemon fanbase brush it off is something I don't think I can live with. So today, we shall be exploring why Pokemon Sun and Moon is such a great refresh to the long-running anime. Whenever it came to mainline Pokemon anime, there have always been two consistent things. The first being our main character, Ash Ketchum, with his companion Pikachu, and two being that each iteration would always be based on whatever is the new game at the time. The anime always served as a massive multi-year long commercial for the games. Every time Ash traveled to a new region, it always served as a soft reboot to make it easy for anyone to hop into the show, but also stay relevant to the current games, hence him always having companions that are characters in-game. While this is still the case, the Sun and Moon games had a very big effect on the anime that previous entries haven't. Every generation has always had the same formula when it came to gameplay and structure, just with different innovations in mechanics and also with new sets of Pokemon. As someone who's played several games across the franchise, if someone were to ask me what you do in the games, I could break it down into four sections. One, catch Pokemon. Two, explore the region by going through routes. Three, battle trainers and gym leaders. And four, beat the team of the region. I don't think this is at all a bad thing for the games because the formula is fun to play, but when the anime is based on a game that has stayed with the same formula for 20 years, the anime is going to reflect that. While it's fun to play, it's not fun to watch. If you've seen any bit of the anime, you already know that Ash will get a new travel group, he will collect the gym badges, fight a big evil, and lose at the league, all while Team Rocket tries to get his Pikachu. For a show that relies heavily on soft freebooting itself, it was surprisingly limited. Sun and Moon are the first games to change two mainstays in the series, getting rid of gyms altogether, and the big one being the region is a set of separate islands instead of one big landmass. These two changes plus the game being way more lighthearted in aesthetic and tone is what allows the anime to be very different. The anime goes all in on being a slice of life comedy, but what makes it work so well is that with the changes the game did, it actually allowed it to avoid a lot of the stale tired cliches the anime has been doing. Episode 1 has a great example of this, with how it shows Ash getting to the Alola region. Usually we see him go home and then travel to said region, but in Sun and Moon, it quickly glosses over it with a very humorous fast forward section, but also the fact that Ash isn't here for gyms or training, but for vacation. It does a good job in setting the tone while also telling the audience this is going to be a very different anime from what they are expecting. While previous entries of the anime have always been episodic, none are in the same way Sun and Moon is. The region being huge pieces of land always allowed a very easy way to start and end an episode, being the character walking through the region or camping while having a simple way to show progress and continuity. There was always a goal that Ash and his groups were striving to achieve, but with this iteration, it's different because of the setting. Since Alola is multiple islands with no gyms or league, the typical travel that we know is replaced with random adventures of Ash and the rest of the cast. There are episodes where Ash helps Kiawe with farming, where the whole gang goes to a Doug Trio concert, or where his Rotom Dex becomes a detective. The traveling of the region was a novel concept in the beginning, but as time went on, it felt more and more like a chore because the characters had to keep on that path to get to their goal, but it never allowed much variation on episodes. They would always end up finding something or someone by happenstance. But here, since Mele Mele Island is the main setting out of all of the islands, traveling is axed because Ash is living here. This more self-contained setting gives the anime an insane amount of episode variety, but also works because Ash being new to a Lola makes it feel like he's actually exploring and experiencing the region than him mindlessly following and sticking to a route. Ash is still the same character that we've seen for the last 20 years, but the difference here is that unlike the past regions, Alola doesn't cater to him. By removing the stuff he typically does, he has to try new things, which is a big welcome change. And I know I'm making it sound like every episode is about 
Ash, which isn't the case. There are a ton of episodes focusing on the other characters, Lana, Mallow, Kiawe, Sophocles, and Lily, who are all super fun and different, and since the setting is more contained, when an episode is about any of them, the setting for that episode can be somewhere completely new to cater to that character and what they want to do. An entire episode where Lily bonds with her Vulpix, Mallow trying to find a seasoning for her recipe, Lana training with her Poplio, and that is just naming a few. And don't worry, Team Rocket is still here, but they are also a little changed. The show keeps their interactions with Ash at a minimum, either at the beginning or end of episodes, and whenever they do meet up in a big way, it's always entertaining because it goes somewhere you're not expecting, or they join in on whatever the current escapade is. Since they don't have to follow him like they normally do, they are usually doing their own things in Alola, which never stops being a joy to watch. What makes Sun and Moon go all the way and completely nail the slice of life comedy is the art and animation. The art style has much thinner outlines and the characters have a softer round look to them. With this shift, since the designs don't have to stay as clean as previous incarnations, it allows for experimentation when animating. Characters don't move like this in the last seasons, they aren't as stretchy, squishy, or bouncy and nowhere near as expressive, making a massive amount of different faces and movement either big or small, and this doesn't just apply to the trainers. All the Pokemon show so much emotion. My favorite example of this is an episode where the Alolan starters get separated from their trainers and have to find them. An entire episode about characters we don't understand is carried completely because of all their expressions. With this art style, it allows the show to have segments and characters to be drawn in completely different ways to exaggerate a scene while not at all feeling out of place. If you hadn't watched the show, you wouldn't even think these three shots all happened one after another. It's very similar to Mob Psycho 100. The show has a very rough look, but due to this has a massive amount of expressions and animation effects that work amazingly well and never felt jarring. Sun and Moon having a softer look makes sense because of the tone while allowing more creative moments. One of the biggest complaints with Sun and Moon is the lack of battles in favor for the more comedic tone. Pokemon battles are still here, but they are much more spread out due to the setting. They happen way less because the characters are busy with something else, but since they are more spread out, when a battle does happen, it actually feels like it matters. Battles feel like something special again because there is a big weight to get to them, and usually that weight is completely worth it. Like I mentioned earlier, the art gives the show a lot of freedom because it makes it easier to animate, and due to this, the battles in Sun and Moon are some of the most dynamic and stunning I've seen in all of the Pokemon anime. Since they happen way less, when they do occur, more time and money is spent on a single battle than usual, making them look amazing. <laughs> For an anime that does so much and is brimming with a ton of personality, it is quite saddening that so many people didn't even give this show a chance. It sucks even more that people didn't even try it because of the art style. When the first images of Sun and Moon were released and people saw Ash, many were not at all happy with the art shift. It was such a big change from what came before which turned a lot of people off from it. The thing is, the studio that works on the anime, their biggest hurdle with the series has always been its art, but not in the way you think. Before I get into the actual production talk, I do want to cover some things to have better context. First, the ones who have been making the Pokemon anime, Studio Oriental Light and Magic, or OLM for short. They are the ones who have been making the anime ever since the first season. OLM is a big studio that has several animation teams that work on different projects. With Pokemon, teams would alternate each season so the show would always stay consistent when it came to its quality and releasing episodes. The teams are always named after the directors they are led by, and with Pokemon, only three teams have worked on it. Team Ota, led by Shoji Ota, who did the show from 1997 to 2006, followed by Team Iguchi, led by Noriaki Iguchi, who worked on it until 2009, and currently Team Kato, led by Hiroyuki Kato. Just to keep it simple, for the rest of the video, when I say Studio OLM, I'm referring to these three teams. The biggest struggle with the anime is that OLM always wants to keep updating the art, but their biggest issue wasn't changing it, but the fans' reaction to the change. When it came to producing Pokemon, OLM would always have to change the art style in a way that fans wouldn't notice. The best example of this is the original series in 2002. The staff at the time
Ming wanted to switch from cells to digital color. This was something normal because the technology made production of episodes much quicker, which would also give the staff more time to work on certain sections in episodes. This was a smart move, but fans didn't like the new look, so what they did was they put a filter over the final product to create a visual noise to give it the look of something done on cells. It was very minor, but effective, and they would over time lessen that filter so viewers would never notice the change. Another great one is that Team Ota would purposely damage their footage so that it would be consistent to what viewers were used to and again very slowly reduce the damage to the point where the show would finally look what they always wanted from the beginning, which would take a long time due to the length of the show. Modernizing Pokemon has always been a big challenge that OLM has always managed to overcome even with the most recent series like Black and White which updated Ash's design, giving more thin line work, and XY was the introduction of 3D environments. It was all done to better the final product. Similar to earlier, the 3D was implemented gradually over the course of the show. Team Kato have been the ones working on Pokemon since 2010. Director Hiroyuki Kato experimented a lot to make the show better, hence the Ash redesign and introduction of 3D. But when it came to Sun and Moon, Kato-san took full advantage that the games it was based on were going somewhere completely different and decided to take the anime a different place as well, completely overhauling the look. While many didn't like the new art, art and animation go hand in hand. How a show looks will dictate how it will be animated. The previous shows, while they did look good, were way more static and most movement was usually saved for battles. By shifting to a softer round look, it allows there to be more action as well as the animation to be consistent but also giving the animators a ton of freedom to try a bunch of new things, hence the variety of expressions and shifts in art. Due to this freedom, it made renowned animator Yoshimichi Kameda hop onto the show making Sun and Moon his first Pokemon project. And if you don't know Kameda, you definitely do know some of his work. He coincidentally worked on Mob Psycho 100, being a character designer and key animator on the opening as well as directing the first episode. He was also the chief animation director for Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and was a key animator for One Punch Man, Soul Eater Episode 34, and Naruto Shippuden Ending 15. After learning this, I very much do see his influence on the anime. The freedom of the show made it that the first thing he worked on was the fast fluid shot of Pikachu battling a ton of Pokemon in the opening. Sun and Moon does so many good things because of a variety of reasons, but the animation is one of the biggest ones, which is why I do want to applaud Hiroyuki Kato. After years of OLM gradually changing the art to not upset fans, Kato knew that drastically changing it for this generation of the anime would cause some major backlash, but he did it because he knew the show would be better for it, and it is. Honestly, the art change wasn't even the reason that turned fans off the anime. What it was, was Ash's new design. All the other characters look great in the new art style. The show doesn't look bad, but when the first images and footage of Sun and Moon were released, when people saw what Ash looked like since it was so different from what they were used to, they lost all interest in it, and some were even very upset and angry at the anime because he looked so weird. I felt the same. When I saw the first images, it looked odd to me and I was very confused and upset at the change, but I kept an open mind. Again, art and animation go hand in hand, so when the first episode aired on TV, I watched it and quickly understood why they changed the art and immediately fell in love with it. The funny expressions and movement is what brings this show to life and what makes it feel so lively. While Ash's previous design looks good, it wouldn't work with the art of Sun and Moon, it just doesn't melt together. The look benefits every aspect of the show while being tonally appropriate. It has given Pokemon an insane level of freedom that it's needed for a very long time and it very much shows in the final product. The show is full of so much character that it even gives Nurse Joy and Officer Jenny personality. That one clip has given them more character than the show has in the last 20 years. If you're someone who doesn't care about all of this and just wants more serious stuff like battles and leagues, let me tell you something. Masamitsu Hidaka, a director for the early Pokemon season, stated in an interview that Ash will never become a Pokemon master, never replacing Ash and Pikachu and keeping the same formula of traveling and collecting badges. So let me ask you something. Do you want to see Ash stay on this never-ending journey of battles and losing at the leagues over and over again? Or see an entire episode where the gang plays Pokemon Baseball and you see OL 
OLM team got to flex their animation and art muscles. I'd rather go with the second one. And if you're now interested in the anime, let me suggest some of my favorite episodes so you can see all the things this show does. Episode 16, the Lost Starters episode I mentioned earlier. Episode 28, that's the baseball one I just talked about. Episode 29, it's a really good camping one. Episode 33, that's a really good Lana fishing episode. Episode 36 shows some of the best sequences of action in the anime. Episode 39, a whole Mallow episode where she drinks away her frustrations. And we need a good old Team Rocket episode, so episode 25, a great one. That's when they meet Team Skull. And I'll just add them in here, the Nostalgia episodes 42 and 43, because they are great all around. Sun and Moon is so much fun and I can't get enough of it, which I think is appropriate. It fell on the 20th anniversary of the franchise and I think it is fitting that that this anime was the one that captured my attention and made me excited to watch new episodes like the original series did when I was a kid. If you were turned off by Pokemon Sun and Moon because of Ash's design, or are someone who didn't know about the anime, you are seriously missing out on one of the most fun and fresh Pokemon anime in a very long time, and I hope you check it out because it is really really good, and it is a damn shame that so many didn't watch it because of a single character design. As I record this, I am really hungry and super duper tired because I spent the last two days non-stop editing this to get it out before the end of the month. So if you're listening to this, I really do appreciate that you hit the end of the video. And if you enjoyed it, you may want to stay on the channel because I make videos about anime all the freaking time. And here are the last two that I made. As always, bye guys, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.